Hi, I'm Elliot Slaughter and I'm an intern with the research team this summer and I've been working on uh, garbage collection and rust. When I chose the title for this talk, I was being a little bit optimistic. I think a better title for the talk would have been How to Hack LLVM to Allow Us to Start Thinking About Implementing Garbage Collection and Rust. Um, but anyway, um, I'm going to do a short intro to Rust and garbage collection and then I'm going to talk about uh, LLVM's current support for a GC such as it is, um, how to hack it to make it actually work for what we want to do, and then uh, see where that gets us. So Rust is a new systems programming language from Mozilla Research. Um, it's intended to be fast, safe, and concurrent. So I'm going to walk through a couple of code examples that demonstrate some of the features that give us each of those um, goals. So here's a short snippet of Rust code. Um, we're walking down a vector of three elements and printing each integer. Uh, and one of the things that um, might not be completely obvious at uh, first looking at this code is that the vector is actually not allocated on the heap here. Uh, since it's a constant vector, we can keep this in the data section of the program. And so we don't actually have to do any allocation at all uh, to run this code. Um, the other thing that uh, you'll notice is that we have some OO looking calls here, the um, integer dot two string. Uh, that's actually not a, uh, a V table there. Uh, we're doing static dispatch, sort of like C++ templates. And so features like that help us uh, get a lot of performance out of our code in this language. But we also want our code to be safe. And especially in C++, it's really easy to make memory leaks or return pointers to deallocated memory or get no, no pointers. And so we tried really hard uh, to make this language work in a safe way. And so in this code, and the first line, the let x there, the at 3 is creating a new uh, integer on the heap. And then um, it's a, a reference counted box. And so it'll automatically go away at the end of the function. But before we do that, we try to take a pointer to the contents of the box and return it. And Rust has a powerful type system that can actually check that this is not a valid reference. Uh, so we track um, how long objects are live in our system. And we've engineered the language in such a way that we know that this object will be deallocated when we return the pointer to it. And lastly, on all of our modern computers with multiple cores, we really need a language that's concurrent. Um, and so we've got a set of standard libraries that give us common uh, parallel tools like Parallel 4, Parallel Map. Um, and we have a lot of language features that support par parallelism. So in the main function here, um, oops, no, ha, fail. So, <laughs> I suppose I need you to log in. Anyway, uh, so we've got a parallel map function, which you'll be able to see in just a moment. I shouldn't be using words. Anyway, um, so we're doing a parallel map, and it's going to spawn off a bunch of threads to run you know, some expensive function. You can imagine that mangle is something that takes a long time. Uh, in reality, it's really just doing an S printf. Um, but you could imagine that being a little bit more complicated. And one thing that you'll notice looking at this source code is all the tildes running around. Uh, those are similar to the at sign in the last example. They're referring to a pointer to heap allocated memory. But in this case, the tilde guarantees that there won't be any data races in this code um, by proving that only one thread will own the pointer to this allocation at any given time. Um, so by now we've probably noticed, oh, question? Um, on the last page, I noticed um, there's an exclamation point on the end of uh, format. Yeah. What does that mean? Format is actually a macro. Uh, and the macro gives us, um, unlike printf in C, we actually have a type safe formatting. Uh, and so it can actually check that, for example, the percent %f corresponds to the parameter name and uh, that the types match up. So the exclamation point marks as a uh, 
as a macro? Yes, okay. exclamation part means macro. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so at this point, uh, you probably noticed that we have a couple of different types of pointers in this language. Uh, the two that you need to know about here are uh, the tilde and the at from the last two examples. The tilde refers to what we call the exchange heap, uh, which is actually similar to C++'s uh, unique pointer added in the newest version of the language. Um, it guarantees that only one task will own that pointer at any given time. Uh, and whenever you uh, assign the pointer, it has move semantics. Uh, and so if you assign a pointer x to some pointer y, then that implicitly nulls out the pointer that you held in x. And we also have compiler support to make sure that you don't refer to x after you've given away to somebody. And the task local heap, which is the at sign, is similar to C++'s shared pointer. It's just a reference counted box like uh, you'd expect from any other language uh, with the additional restriction that since it's reference counted and we don't know exactly how many references live at any given point in time, you can't move it between tasks. Uh, and so if you want to pass a value to another thread, you always have to create a tilde box. But if you only need to operate on data locally, then you generally use app boxes. So why do we want to use garbage collection in this language? Um, I should probably mention that the tilde boxes don't require garbage collection at all. Um, so that's not something that I'm going to be working on or have worked on. Um, because uh, since only one task owns them at any given time, um, when the task, uh, if, it, if the pointer ever goes out of scope, you know for sure that you can deallocate it. Uh, so that's really easy. But for the app boxes, it gets a lot more tricky because um, we're reference counting right now. And so you'd figure, well, you know, Objective-C and all these languages do reference counting. Isn't that efficient? It turns out that um, in a lot of applications that currently do reference counting, uh, the performance isn't there as much as you'd think. Uh, churn on, on the reference counts is actually an issue. And so that's something where we could actually probably get better performance with a garbage collector. Uh, and the other thing is that you can't collect cycles with reference counting. Or you could add a garbage collector on the side and collect the cycles, but that turns out that it's actually slower than just going all the way with a garbage collector. So we might as well just do that. But it turns out that we actually have a couple advantages that languages like, for example, Java don't have. And the biggest one is that all of these heaps, the app boxes that we're going to be collecting, are local to each task. And so we can create one task or one heap per task which means that we never have to do any locking to get to these heaps to do allocation or deallocation, and we never have to stop the world. So we can do isolation between the tasks. And so if you have one task that doesn't GC and a different task that does GC, then the one that does GC never has to stop the task that doesn't want to garbage collect. And on top of that, we can make the compiler enforce that the task that doesn't want to GC never allocates any memory. And so we can, uh, if we have like a UI thread in a mobile app, for example, we can guarantee that it'll never pause at all. So that leaves us with GC in a context where I think it makes a lot more sense. Um, instead of pushing GC to work in these really low latency contexts, we can use GC where GC really does well, which is where latency is acceptable, but we want really high throughput. And I think in that context, we can really push the performance to beat reference counting. Um, so before I talk in detail about uh, what I've done for the summer, I uh, figure that I should give a short overview of garbage collection uh, so that we're all on the same page. So the basic garbage collection algorithm is pretty straightforward. Uh, first of all, you need to know what um, values are live on the stack. and so. Um, we call those values roots. And so you start at the roots and you walk recursively down um, the roots to any objects that they point to and then any objects that those things point to and you're marking them all as you go along. And then anything that's not marked at the end, you free. 
Um, but of course, it's a little bit trickier than that because how do you figure out where the pointers are on the stack? If you've got an integer on the stack, that might look kind of sort of like a pointer. And so the compiler needs to tell you uh, what values on the stack are actually pointers. Uh, and so we call that the stack map. And then the stack walker, which walks down the stack, uses this map uh, to figure out where the live roots are. <clears throat> um, once you have all the live roots on the stack, of course, you need to uh, dereference them to figure out where all the other pointers are. And the tricky bit there is knowing what kind of a value you're pointing into. Uh, so it turns out in Rust, that's actually pretty easy because the types on the heap are self-describing. Um, so that's pretty much a non-issue for us. Um, and then lastly, the allocator needs to keep a list of all the live allocations. Um, so there are some fancy ways to do that. I'm not going to talk too much about it now, um, but know that it can be done efficiently. So uh, when I started this project, a lot of my friends said, wait a moment, doesn't LLVM already support garbage collection? Like, why don't you just use that? Uh, and the answer, yes? LLVM. LLVM is the low, well, it doesn't really matter what it stands for. <laughs> it's a backend for a compiler, similar to GCC, that we're using um, in Rust. Yeah. Um, so, for example, Apple uses it in their C compiler right now. Um, so LLVM has a lot of fancy features, and it does uh, support fully featured garbage collection. They have documentation, and there's like a nice web page that tells you exactly how to implement it. And they have a list of all the different kinds of GC you can implement with it. And that's all great, except for the one problem, which is that it's slow. Um, and specifically, when you tell LLVM that you have a value which needs to be garbage collected, um, it can't be optimized. You can't copy the pointer into a register. Uh, you can't move those values around. Basically, all of the LLVM optimizations, if they see those values, they'll just like uh, escape early and they won't optimize your code. And so that's really um, not acceptable for us. And we really, um, the, the existing languages that use LLVM's GC infrastructure are really suffering in performance because of it. And so how would we go about solving that? And the most obvious way to solve it is to teach LLVM to understand what it means for a garbage collected pointer to live in a register. And the problem with that is that um, you're now going to have to modify all of the LLVM optimization passes to also know how to deal with those pointers and how to move them from the stack onto registers and then back. Um, and that's a lot of code, and we've talked to the LLVM team, and no one there wants to do it, and we don't have the people to do it. Um, so uh, technically, this is the correct way to do it, but it's not something we have time to do. And so at the beginning of the summer, uh, some people on my team suggested an alternative approach, which is sort of sneaky, which is to not tell LLVM about the pointers in the beginning, but then infer those pointers after LLVM has run all of its optimization passes and then create some fake machine instructions to get them the rest of the way through uh, the LLVM backend down to the machine code. Um, and then we can inter uh, intercept those machine instructions and take them out uh, before we actually print the machine code. And that gives us the list of pointers we need. So, uh, so that's what I spent my summer doing. Uh, it is working on unoptimized builds only. And yes, uh, I feel the irony there. <laughs> but um, it's, it's a similar situation with the first approach where really making this work with the optimized LLVM builds is still a lot of work. And so that's uh, something that someone's going to have to do. Either me or someone else will have to spend some more time making this actually work. So that's my talk. Uh, and thank you for having a great summer.